Have you ever wished you could know what the future held before you got there? What if you were given the gift of knowledge before you even began your journey? Now, I've been thinking about that because I made a lot of stupid mistakes when I was younger, and I wish I had someone to say, don't go down that road, go down this one. I'm Sherry, and welcome to From the Eyes of Wisdom, where we are pairing an experienced elder from Krista Senior Living with a passionate King's High School student ready to launch into the world. And while these conversations won't tell the future exactly, they did reveal a lot we weren't expecting about how to live life well. Are you ready? I can't wait for you to hear this. Welcome to From the Eyes of Wisdom. I am your host, Sherry Lynn, and here we are, oh, another episode, and I have Jack here and Sloan, and this is gonna be great because we're talking law, and it's almost all going to go over my head, but that's okay because they're gonna know what they're talking about, and it's gonna be exciting. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for okay. having me. Okay, so Sloan, you are on mock trial, well, is it mock trial? Is yes. that what's called, it's called mock trial? Yes. Okay, so I'm watching your pre-interview, and I felt like she's probably a shark are you a shark when it comes to the mock trial? I try to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you go for the kill, right? Yes. Okay, so you love doing that. Yes. Where did the love of law or wanting to be a lawyer come from? Because if I'm correct, your mother is a pharmacist? Yes. Okay, so is it just, do you like to argue? Do you like to debate? Is it, where did it come from? Yeah, I just love to argue. I think <laughs> I, I got it from my mom. She's a very argumentative person. Okay. <laughs> and so. Hopefully she's watching. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. But um, yeah, I think I got it from my mom. Okay, too. all right. So you love law and you're really interested in going into law, yes. right? And you love mock trial. Okay, so uh, Jack, you did not grow up saying, I'm gonna be a lawyer. That's right, I did not. All right, and even when you got your law degree, I was fascinated by your story because I'm like, it seems as if you used this phrase, so I'm gonna use it. You used the phrase that you're independently poor. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> Instead of independently rich, it seemed as if you chose very meaningful work um, that was not going to make you a wealthy man, even though you went to Harvard Law. Is that That's fair true. to say? That's true. That's fair to say. I had two very expensive graduate educations. Yeah. And I wasted both of them. Okay. <laughs> the other one uh -huh. was I had a year of Russian at the Army Language School in Monterey, California. Mm -hmm. That cost Uncle Sam a lot of money. Okay, and you, you went, went to Russian, Russian school? Yeah, I was okay. fluent at the end. Okay. But if you don't use it, you lose it. Can you still speak Russian? Not at all? Oh, I know words. Okay, but could you speak a fluent sentence in Here, Russian? I'll give you one. Let's have it. Okay, at Easter time we say, Christ is risen. Christ He's is risen Jesus. indeed. Okay. In English, that sounds like you're reading out of a phone book. In Russian, it really rings a bell. Okay. Christos voskresye. Vaistanu voskresye. Yes, he has. Amen. All right, good. All right, that's your <laughs> That's So you got that, and then you had the law degree. When I was reading, or listening to, rather, your story, I was like, there was, there was something to be said, and I really do think you need to hear this, Sloan about mentorship. And I don't even know if you were really going down that road, but at every step in your life, whether it was, you went to, your undergrad was at Dartmouth, am I right? Yes. yes, okay. So at every step of your life, it was like, well, I had a coach here, and then they told me this. But if I didn't have a coach or someone didn't tell me something, then I didn't know that I should have did this or I shouldn't. Like the importance of having someone in your life to tell you that's not, this, that's not the way this is. Yes. In the Army, I had a coach. Yes. I got to law school, mm -hmm. and I didn't have enough sense to get me a coach. Right. That, so you but need then, a coach. That's very important. That, that's when you get to law school. Get with somebody that's a second or third year student and get in tight with them and have them coach you because you have moved into a very extraordinary village. Mm. The brightest village you'll probably ever be in. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah. And it has its own customs and rules and regulations, and you better find out what they are. Mm. Instead of just doing it the way I did by, I can imagine now why I was so naive mm -hmm. that I thought the army was going to be tricky, but law school wasn't. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. Now, something you said about the army, just briefly, I want to say because it was a good piece of advice your coach said, which was always volunteer. Mm -hmm. I like that. When I heard it, I was like, that makes sense. Volunteer. Because when you volunteer, you get to choose what you're going to do. Yeah. Instead of somebody telling you, go over there and do that. Yeah, you volunteered. So you go. Now, let me ask you this about your story, because I was a little confused. He went to Harvard, which is where you want to go, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so he went to Harvard Law. There's a moment where you are meeting with the dean of Stanford? Yes. Okay. And he tells you something about the importance of where you go and what you do. Yes. Did you do the opposite of his? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you did, Jack, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so can you give her the advice? Sure. And then you, but you did the opposite. Yes. I just want to be clear. When I was okay, in the ahead. Army Language School at Monterey, California, I called up Stanford, got connected with the dean, Dean Spaeth, and made an appointment with him to meet with him at 7 o'clock on a Friday evening while I was on my way driving to San Francisco for the weekend. I don't have any idea why he agreed to meet at 7 o'clock on a Friday evening. But we met. And he said, now every year they come out with standings of the law schools. And he could afford to be stand scornful about this because Stanford is usually in the top three. And he says, this is an academic game. He said, the real question is, where do you get the best legal education? And the best legal education is not to be found at Harvard. It's in the law review of any one of the top 15 law schools in the nation. You're better off going to Boulder, Colorado and being on the Rocky Mountain Law Review than you are in going to Harvard and getting a C. So I went to Harvard and got a C plus. All right, so you're at Harvard. Yeah, I'm at Harvard. <laughs> uh-huh. Can you talk about education? Because I don't know if they do this anymore, because I'm not sure, this is not to be offensive to your generation, but I'm not sure a generation could take what you called education by trauma? Yeah. Do, do they still, still do, do that, that, do you know? Oh, you better believe it. They do. Oh, well, yeah. you better tell her about it. Well, let, yeah. me, let me give you an example. All right. First class, first day, torts. First case, ABD, AB, ADS and wife. From, um, no, 1114, something like that. Okay. Um, first words, Abbott, C.B. Okay, 125 people in the classroom. Okay, there were 625 in the school. And, no, in our class. Mm -hmm. it's, the largest, it's the largest daytime law school in the country. And you can throw a stone in that class and your chances would be about one out of ten you'll hit a valedictorian. Uh, okay? Yeah. So it's a very elite group. And professor calls on a person. By the way, you go into class the first day, 125 in the classroom, mm -hmm. the professor knows you all by name. You're, he has a seating chart. Yeah, yeah. And he's got the seating chart memorized. So he says, you say, I don't know your Rutsula. last name yet. Rutsula. Huh? Rutsula. Rexula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Rexula. <clears throat> What does CB stand for? You don't know. Right. Nobody in the class raises his hand. Right. And he says, CB stands for Chief Baron. There he's just convicted 125 of these hot shots right. that they don't know how to read. 
because they wouldn't have known that. Well, you got to look it up. Ah, they would have had material. Ahead, forgive me, I wouldn't. They would. They would have had that material ahead of time. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. The savvy ones, and okay. this, the Army helped me. I had enough sense to look at the bulletin board and find out what the assignment was a day early. And CDS, or, yes, CDS and wife, mm -hmm. it was only about that long. Okay. You know, I read it in 11 seconds. Okay. And I read it a second time, and I thought, geez, there's nothing, nothing here. And it had Chief Barron in it. Well, that was what the first word was, okay. Habit CB. Okay. So... In your graduate schools, law, business, medicine, the chief method of teaching is problem solving. Okay? okay. And it's, uh, Harvard started it off in, uh, I think, the 1860s with the case, what they call the case method. Mm -hmm. You're reading all the time, you're reading case problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you come into class, and the professor may say, uh, ask you to uh, state the case or uh, argue the case. He, you, he may give you the choice of taking the defense or the, or the prosecution. Uh, it doesn't make any difference which one you take. Mm -hmm. He will spear you. <laughs> <laughs> Spear you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like a spear huh? into you. Like yes. stab you. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I was understanding what um, you were saying. The, uh, so <laughs> now the result of this, uh -huh. I mean, this is actually your your concentrator in a pretty emotional situation. Yeah. Because it's threatening. Yes. And I feel threatened. But I can remember almost nothing of what I learned in college. Okay. I can remember a lot of stuff very vividly from law school. Okay. So the teaching uh, method works. But it's But it's painful. Yes. I get yeah. I'm gonna, what do you think about what you just heard? Because that's what you want to go through. Does yeah. that sound exciting to you? Yeah, cold calling. That's what they call it modern day times. I had a my uh, mock trial teacher last year did that and that's that's how I remember most so of the stuff. So you've been there. You've been there already. Tell me how how it went down. Um, I mean, it was kind of like if you knew the answer, you knew the answer. If you didn't, she moved on to someone else, and you learned the answer by because she'll ask you again. And okay. And was there anything in you that did it feel traumatic, or it felt like okay? Not that means I got to step my game up. It it made me want to step my game Make up. Make you want to step your game up. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the point, right? And, that, and, and to keep it in your memory because it was an emotionally traumatic now experience. Now I have one really good takeaway from law school. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is how we should be teaching scripture. Ah, okay. Okay? Yeah. You take ordinary problems. Procrastination, for example. What does scripture tell us about that? Hmm. So you look it up. Yeah. Like in a concordance or... Well, now we got our tools in our cell phone. Yeah. With the... Uh, Bible app. Is uh, uh, Gateway Bible mm -hmm. and uh, Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible is my sure. favorite. And you come up. In that way, if you, if you do a year study like that, you end up having the Bible arranged topically in your head. Mm. Now, the way we study the Bible now is we do it book by book. That's right. Yeah. Which is a very interesting way to do it. But uh, coming out of my Lutheran background, uh, they say the book, the Bible is the rule and norm of life. Mm -hmm. That's a very good analysis. Okay. But we don't learn the Bible that way. Mm -hmm. We don't learn that the Bible can deal with practical problems and give us very sound advice. Right. Wonderful advice from the Lord. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, the case method is the way we ought to be learning the Bible. That, you know what, Jack, that makes a lot of sense. It, it, because it goes back to, where is that? Is that in, oh, Jack, am I right? Is it 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, rightly dividing the word of truth? That's, mm -hmm. that's what that sounds yes, like to me. Yes. You would take the word of truth and you would divide it based on, hey, Sloan, that's pretty good. Because she's going to need... 
that in, you're gonna need that now, nowadays. But specifically when you get into college, undergrad and grad, is to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. What I'm going through right now, does God's word have something to say about that? What does it have to say about that? And then looking that up here. Now, I usually give this to them later to tell them to write down words of wisdom from you. I never thought about that because growing up, it was, first of all, you learn the books of the Bible, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Like you learn that as a kid, vacation Bible school. And then you do read as, you know, you read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, you read it like that. But using it as case study or, or, or words or things that you're going through, that does make sense. That's a good nugget. There's a good legal word okay. that deals with this. All right. The ver verb is to parse. To parse. P-A-R-S-E. Parse. To you parse a contract. Write that down slow and to parse. To parse, parse a contract, for example. Yeah. You know what it says, how it applies, mm -hmm. uh, the responsibilities of each party and so on. Yeah. And you also know what it doesn't say and what it doesn't cover. Ah. Okay? That's good, too. Yes. Now, now John Calvin could parse scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah which is pretty amazing because right. that's the process that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have all these aids that we got. Right. Using this method of problem solving mm -hmm. in scripture, after a while you can, you can begin to parse the Bible. Yeah, that really is. I mean, if you could take scripture like that, Sloan, your life will be, it will revolutionize your life. It really would. The little things like, well, I don't want to get into my life, okay. but I have done things like that just because my grandfather was a preacher. And so he taught us things like that right. so that I know a little more scripture. I'm not saying I lived it. <laughs> I'm saying I, <laughs> I knew it just because he taught us like that. So that, that is a good nugget. You do that during your college years, start now you'll be well ahead of the game. Something that you said, because I want to get into a little bit of life stuff, because uh, you said something, and you said it in passing, but it stuck with me, Jack. It was a story you told, and I have it in my phone. That's why I have my phone out, because when you said it, I typed it down. You are in New England, and I think you're still in law school, and you're working... What are, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're on the docks. What are you doing with sailboats? What are you? Oh, I was a sailing instructor. Sailing instructor. Okay. Oh, okay. You want that story, huh? Yeah, because you, you said something about our personalities when we're young that I'd like you to hear, Sloan, because you did something that I did a double take on. Like, well, why would he do that? And then I thought when you said that's how 20-year-olds are, and I thought, Oh yeah, that actually was how I was when I was 20. And so you're, it's, a, it's a dark and stormy night. It's a dark and stormy night. Take it from there. Biddeford Pool, Maine. Mm -hmm. I was bringing in the club launch, uh, which was about a 18 foot boat. And uh, the guy on the dock was a hiring partner from a New York law firm. And I brought the launch in quite skillfully and landed it well and threw in the painter, the bow line. Mm -hmm. And he snubbed it around the uh, pile. And uh, as I'm getting out of the boat, he says, uh, you're at Harvard Law? And I said, yes. And he said, uh, well, next time you're in Manhattan, look me up. So there I had a shot at getting with a major New York law firm. Mm -hmm. But our personalities in our 20s, in some ways, are kind of brittle, I think. That's what I typed down. Brittle. <laughs> and and I, yeah. <laughs> I took this as an insult. <laughs> Why? He didn't, he didn't ask me anything about what I was studying at Harvard Law or, or anything like that. But because I'd landed the launch skillfully, mm -hmm. he was willing to interview me. See, what I didn't realize was that landing a boat well in a storm is probably a better indicator for your ability as a lawyer than the stuff at the law school. But I didn't know that then. 
Right. And so what, what struck me about it, because when he said he, he took offense to it, I was like, oh, why would you? And then I thought of myself in my 20s, and I was like, yep, I would have did the exact same thing. I would have I messed up an opportunity based on what I would think for myself. I, you would probably qualify it as the same, as an immature thought. Yeah. Yeah. And so if in your 20s you can maybe... I don't know that there's any way to get around immaturity other than surround yourself with wisdom and say that that's the only way you can really identify, I think, maybe an immature thought is that you've heard wisdom and say, uh, uh, that's because you have the initial, why would you ask me that when I helped you get into this? Ask me about what I, and then you have some wisdom that says, uh, don't think about that. The man is offering you an interview, take the interview. You see what I'm saying? So I thought, I love that story and I thought that was important because as you start to get older and have more opportunities, definitely in your 20s, for me anyway, your attitude, <laughs> our attitudes and our emotions can definitely mess up some really great opportunities. So let me ask you this. I'm gonna ask you, son, can you remember the, the last time you felt really discouraged? Mm, yes, I can. Our, I'm on cheer, and our uh -huh. cheer team goes to UCA camp, United okay. Cheer Association camp. Okay. I tried out for All American. I didn't make All American, mm -hmm. and I was I took that pretty hard. Okay. I took it pretty personal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what what like what did that look like for you? Was that crying? Was yes. that depression? Was that I don't want to talk to anybody? I didn't it, like what what did that look like in your life? The discouragement. Uh, crying. Crying. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And then like a day, two days? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I had a great mentor okay. who like really helped me through it Okay. and gave me good scripture to go back to. Good. Proverbs 31, 25. Which says? Um, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh with no fear of the future. Ooh, me and Jack are in pregnant. It was, yeah, <laughs> Jack and I like that. Very good, okay. Two questions, the first question is, and here's why I'm asking, because I was listening to your mm -hmm. uh, pre-interview, and finance played a big part in law, right? Like, hey, I'd like to make a couple dollars, right? I ain't mad at you. So to choose, that's a choice to say I have a law degree and I can practice law, and that would put me you know, in another income bracket. And to choose to go into nonprofit, I'm wondering, Number one, why? Did you feel like that was a call? Did you feel like that was a, something that God had purposed to you to do? Did you feel a specific yes. calling? You did. And then what part, if any, did your law degree play in it or your knowledge of law play into that? Did you use it at all or was it not really even a factor in the work that you chose to do or the work that you felt like God called you to do? I did something much more difficult than the average law career. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> starting from nothing, went into uh, development of quality, affordable, low-income housing mm -hmm. in the lowest income community in Cincinnati without need for direct public funding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I was into that for, I think, 19 years. Wow. And uh, got married, raised family. Did you ever feel financially secure, or was it always kind of? Oh. <laughs> 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 That's the answer. That's, That's the, the answer to That's that one. That's the answer. I got it. <laughs> it was a very strong leading, strong I guess. Strong leading, yeah. I say, say, I felt this was what I needed to do. Okay. Sloan? Yeah. Be a lawyer, have your suit on, pink suit, ready, ready, ready. Feel that leading inside. Hey, I want you to go work in nonprofit for $28,000 a year. <laughs> Are you still holding on? She's talking big money. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, that, that's a paycheck. Can you, <laughs> can you feel yourself saying, okay, God? Now, that's a lot to ask when you're in 10th grade, so you don't have to answer it now. I'm just saying, here's a man who had that, Harvard Law and all of that, feels a strong leading, and that's the path God led him yeah. on. 
I sure hope so. Okay. I mean, I hope I'm, I'm called by God to do something, and if it's law, it's law. If it's not, it's not. Yeah. I know when I turn 18, I want to try to get my real estate license. Okay. And my dad currently owns a duplex, and okay. it, it, it's a nonprofit at this point because okay. he's, he's very generous. He's mm. someone that realizes emergencies happen, family, getting food on the table yeah. comes before paying your yeah. rent. And so he's very generous. I'd like to take that and turn it into something like I love that. a nonprofit. I got to close out, guys. Before I do that, um, I want to, two questions. Jack, let me ask you in life, do you have any regrets? No serious regrets. No serious regrets. No. Okay. My life, I've had a marvelous life, uh, a very... Uh, unusual life mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very content with it and I'm ready to go whenever the Lord wants to take me. Oh my gosh. There is nothing better in life than that, I will tell you, Sloan. If you could sit somewhere and say, you know what, I don't have any regrets and anytime God is ready, so am I, that is a wonderful life led and I honor you for that, sir. Thank you. So, okay, Sloan. Get the piece of paper. You you already wrote some stuff. Yeah. She's going to have that sitting over there in Harvard, shaking in her boots, trying to remember everything Jack said. What did he say? I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to do. If you had one piece of advice, not just for law, not just for law school, for life, for her, one piece of advice. She's going to write it on that piece of paper. She is going to carry that piece of paper with her through life. She's going to have it. She's going to walk down the aisle. She's going to have it in her little purse with her uh, wedding dress. She's going to have it in the maternity ward. She's going to have it everywhere she goes. This one piece of advice from Jack. No pressure. <laughs> I know the answer. To you that. know? Let's have it. You ready? Yes. Do you know about baptism in the Holy Spirit? Ooh. Yeah. Okay, good. Learn to do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Follow the Holy Spirit is... <laughs> I have a jacket and all this on, but you could see goosebumps if I showed you. <laughs> there is no better advice than that. That is my whole life, is follow the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why I'm sitting on this couch and not in a casket somewhere, <laughs> is follow the Holy Spirit. If you don't take, I promise you, take that piece of paper, it, and that will guide you through everything is follow the Holy Spirit. And it, 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 it may not be an audible voice, it may not, but the whole, if your heart is open to hearing, he will lead you. That's, uh, we're gonna end there before I end up in a pile of tears. That's this episode of From the Eyes of Wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Jack and Sloan and whew, 